Okay, so here we are with the three of the five Moberg girls. <laughs> the, odds. the odds. What can you tell us, and I'll just pass the mic back and forth, what you remember that your dad has told you about the Mobergs and about great-grandmother Moberg? So, Pat, you want to start? Okay. You're the oldest. Yes, I'm number one. So, let me see. Uh, our dad was the youngest by far in the family. I think about 17 years younger than our Aunt Clara, who was your grandmother. And so he never got to go on the trip to Sweden because, you know, that took place before he was born. So he heard about it all his life growing up, though. He did finally get back to Sweden in 1981. He managed to find a whole lot of relatives before he went and connected with them, and that was really great. I think mostly he went where I went last year, which is the Urubru area. Uh, his father came from a little tiny place called Nora Huna, which is south of Urubru, which is west of Stockholm. And I'm not sure where Grandma came from. I looked up on a map. It's not too far from there. Your great-grandmother. Uh -huh. But um, because her last name was Johnson, it's harder to trace her back. Clara was always our lovely Aunt Clara, and we have some memories about our father's brothers, too. So there are three boys, Jack, Vic, and Walter, and two girls, Clara and Francis. And Clara and Francis and my father had children to carry on their memories, but Vic and Jack didn't. We remember Uncle Vic as being very kindly. We'd go visit him and his wife, Nell, and he would always find quarters and dimes and nickels in our ears and so we'd leave there with quarters and dimes and nickels and I remember that they had chickens. Well I remember the Banty chickens because they were really fun to chase around on their property and and they'd run they were free-ranging so we got to chase them and I just remembered they had a comfy cozy small house somewhere where here on Vashon Island. Uncle Jack was always very interesting because we never knew where he was going to be living in the Mount Vernon Burlington area and whenever I went with my dad it was like playing detective because we'd stop at the post office and make inquiries about where Jack might be living and we'd get some leads and we'd go knock on doors and ask people and eventually we'd always find him he'd be at a different location he had problems obviously um, with alcoholism and um, but he was always glad to see us and we saw him at his better times but I think he lived a hard life and I know he died of lung cancer my dad took him to the University of Washington Hospital for all of his cancer treatments until he died from you know smoking and drinking too much and uh, but I have good memories of him because he was kind and I know that he was married she came from a prominent uh, Skagit Valley home and she died awfully young too and together they didn't have any children and I know they lived in the farm in the Stanwood Mount Vernon area and I know it burned down at some point and they weren't able to rebuild it and, and I know that that was after I think our grandmother retired from farming and our grandfather had predeceased her. He was quite a bit older I think than she was. My dad has shown me before where that family farm was, and there's no building there now. It's a big open field kind of between La Conner and Stanwood on the west side of I-5, and I couldn't tell you now where it, where it was. There's a Moberg Road. Yeah, and um, so then also Uncle Vic, I remember when he passed away, I was told, and I, I assume this is true, that he just... You know, took a nap on the couch and just didn't wake up one day. When the Mobergs finally came out from, I think, North Dakota it was? South, South Dakota. They ended up on Vashon because they had some friends that were living here. And they lived in a place called Land, that's now Landy's Corner, which is who bought the land from them. Okay, and they weren't there here all that long, long enough for Clara, I know, to go to school on the island. But then they moved up to Mount Vernon and Jack must have moved with them at that point. Right. Now the thing about the fire is I understand that he saved that piano and that piano was a, a source of conflict I guess between Clara and Jack. For some reason there was some kind of breakage 
in their relationship, and I don't know if you guys know anything more about that. Jack was the black sheep of the family, so I think he had had a breakage in his relationships with all of his siblings except for our father. I remember our mother actually telling us some stories that there had been some ill feelings about Jack getting things of their parents that, you know, others in the family thought that they should have and that Jack sort of took stuff and drank away and gambled away money and so the other siblings were kind of ticked off at him. And I think our dad was the only one who really stayed at all close to him and our mother wouldn't visit him for example. So he was an alcoholic, but I remember him as just a very quiet old man. Our dad would take us, Marie and me, Marie who's not here today, with the two youngest, to visit Jack when he was very old and dying. He was just such a Scandinavian, he barely said anything, seemed like this very nice old man. I heard our our dad tell some stories about Grandma and Grandpa Moberg, and I'm not sure if they're true or not, so maybe you guys can tell me. Like, both our grandmother Moberg and grandfather Moberg came here separately from Sweden and had adjoining homesteads yeah. in South Dakota. She had come over and worked as kind of a servant for several years and then somehow got the wherewithal to get her own homestead, which I think is really cool in the 18. 18- 80s or 90s or early part of the 20th century and then he was another Swede right next door and they got married and kind of combined their land I think is really cool and then they got the heck out of South Tacoma or South Dakota (laughs) South Tacoma South Tacoma (laughs) and and came here and my dad used to tell the story that it was because they they didn't like the Dakotas and they had gotten some letters from friends saying come to Vashon it's just like the old country you know, it's really pretty here. But there, there, my understanding is that our grandfather didn't like it because he couldn't farm here because there's too many rocks in the soil, too many glacial deposit rocks in the soil, and you can't till the soil here very well. And so that's when they decided to move to Mount Vernon. But I think they lived in Seattle. Yes. Was that yes, was that there. before you? Do you no. remember? It was. It, it was in between Vashon and Mount Vernon because this is told, this is in writing in the material my father put together, that his father had some kind of horrible stomach, turns out it was probably cancer, and they moved to Seattle for a year so he could be close to doctors, and the doctor said he only had a few months to live, or had a year to live, so the, my father wrote, you know, he was the youngest child, so he was pretty young I think he was in first grade or he was in elementary school yeah when they lived in Seattle and he went to Green Lake Elementary I believe so he remembers though on the year anniversary of when the doctor said his father was going to die they walked three of them walked around Green Lake his father went into remission for quite a few years and so then that's when they they decided he was going to live after all so they moved up to Mount Vernon and bought the farm then so they hadn't been to Mount Vernon at that point. It was after his illness they right. went to Mount Vernon. Right. And your dad was young, so he grew up in Mount Vernon. Yeah. Yeah. He, just, he graduated from Mount Vernon High School. There was always supposed to be uh, some relative who had a child, as they called it, on the wrong side of the sheets. That's what they called it back then. And that there was another Moberg son, a Cecil Moberg or something like that. Do you guys remember anything about that? I do remember a vague story. Yeah, and I don't know anything more about it. But um, uh, so I don't know further information. But hey, maybe in this day and age of the internet, we can find out more. That's a good yeah. question. Let's yeah. See. Uh, I just wanted to add a little story about the homestead, to what Elizabeth said. According to the written material our father put together, which I've read pretty recently, um, the reason our grandmother got the homestead is because one of the people she worked for was kind of an enlightened guy, the father of the family, and he suggested to her, you know, you qualify for a homestead because you're a single woman, you're not married, so you can get your own homestead. Why don't you do that? So he was really good in giving her that advice, and she took that advice, and then the next married the next door neighbor, the adjoining homestead. <laughs> Another thing that I'm not sure um, how true this is, but didn't they at one point establish some sort of like savings and loan in the Mount Vernon farming community? Our, grand, our grandfather was on the board of a bank in South Dakota. In, no, is it is it Mino, right. M, M-I-N-O-T, is that the name Minot? of it? They pronounce it Minot. Minot, is that how they pronounce it? Yeah, but that's not, I don't. 
could be. There, it's it could some, have been headquartered there. Yeah. The, uh, um, I, I, it's we have it in writing somewhere. I could look it yeah, up. Yeah, it's in that same material. That yeah. I yeah, he was somehow involved with a bank or on the board of the bank or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, there, there was some. But just, just uh, on another subject, one of my favorite photographs of our my dad is when he was going to school. And it must have been maybe 7th, 8th, or ninth grade. There's a picture of him with his, about 10 of his classmates, and they're all barefoot. Can you imagine going to school barefoot? It's a school picture. Can you imagine going to school in Mount Vernon barefoot? You know, even in the summertime, and your feet would be kind of cold, I think. So I, it just amazes me that uh, kids would run around bare, barefoot like that back then. I just wanted to say something about our father's character. Um, as evidenced by the care he took of his brother Jack, including like carrying him to the car and stuff when he was very frail and close to death. My father was a very quietly caring person who didn't call attention to himself, but he would do things like that for people just because he thought it was the right thing to do. And he was that kind of person, just quietly in the background doing really good things. So I do want to ask you about your dad. now. He grew up in Mount Vernon, graduated from high school there, and obviously they were dirt poor at that point because Elsa was a widow, and she was working the farm probably. You don't think they were no, dirt no. poor? They My were understanding is they were prosperous and they actually were in a position to be able to loan mo money to other farmers who weren't as lucky as they were. And, and she was she was not a widow yet by the time. I think he died in the early 30s, and so my father would have been a young adult at that time. Oh, okay. So, and then like, she sold the farm, and that's how she was able to buy the home in Vashon. Well, first she lived in Mount Vernon. She lived in a. I remember it's in the information that Elsa gave us after she moved from the farm. She moved to a house in Mount Vernon before she moved back to Vashon, where it was where we all remember her house in, um, in close to town, the two-story white house with the hedge bushes in the front and the stairs that you would climb up. And there was that cloth over the well above the stairs, and we'd stand up there and scream at each other and scare each other and there were those closets in there you probably remember those like you know, on the, side. Uh, the the closets that in the upstairs bedrooms they were like dormer type rooms and the closets ran the length of all the room and you could go from one room to the other by going through the closets so we'd play hide and seek in there and <laughs> they're kind of like side <laughs> addicts yeah. yeah bad house is still there is it really yeah yeah, yeah. it's between the uh, funeral home and the wellness center, and it's a, fa a two a couple that live there. Oh wow! Yeah. What a place to, two places to be the same. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and, and there was like a a wagon wheel that somebody had made into a merry-go-round there, and my my dad used to go there and he'd mow grandma's lawn. Uh -huh. And we'd play on that wagon wheel. There were some next door neighbor kids that we would play with, and we'd spin around and around on that. And I remember I must have been a real little kid. I must have been a brat because Grandma made some tuna fish sandwiches, and I didn't want tuna fish, and so I got hardtack to eat for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Served me right. What is hardtack? <laughs> it's like a very, it's like a round, large cracker, and it's just hard. It's like a rye crisp that's harder, twice as hard as a rye crisp. It's not very tasty. <laughs> So next time you had the tuna fish. Yeah. <laughs> so whereabouts did your dad go to school? And uh, yeah, he he went to, one year to Washington State University and came to his senses, and then so he spent the last three years at the University of Washington, which he liked a lot better. So he graduated from the UW, and then um, it was the Depression when he graduated, and I think it was around that time that his father died. So he didn't necessarily want to be a teacher. He really wanted to be a journalist and a writer, but he took whatever job he could get during the Depression. So he uh, taught school in Mo Clips on the coast, the Washington coast. And we found when we were going through our parents' stuff a few years ago, a silver-plated cigarette lighter inscribed to our father. It said, to Walter Moberg, on the occasion of his going to war, 
from the Grateful Citizens of Moclips, and it was June 1942, because he enlisted in the Navy after Pearl Harbor. So, um, and then he came back after World War II, went back to teaching school in Moclips, and then and met my mother. In Moclips? No, they met through mutual friends in Seattle. I think it was summer vacation or something, you know. She, they, she lived in Kent. She yeah, in Kent at, at it was her Kent. first year of teaching in Kent, because she was 13, she was younger than my father. So uh, they got married in December of 1946, and she ne needed to finish out her year of teaching. So they they were married, but, you know, living in Moclips and Kent, which is not too close. So my father would commute on weekends and holidays and stuff. And evidently I was conceived during one of those times when my father commuted to Kent, because I must have been conceived in March since I was born the following December. So um, then... Emily and I uh, spent the first couple years of our lives in Moclips. We were both born in Aberdeen, which is where the hospital was, but we lived in Moclips. So the ocean is in our blood. I was four when we left there. Eileen was on the way. Our mother was pregnant with girl number three within four years, and she insisted to my father that we move closer to civilization. <laughs> so they compromised on Monroe. So, yeah, because, I mean, it still takes an hour to get from Moclips to Aberdeen, which is where any grocery stores or doctors or anything would have been. So. Grandma Moberg, uh, Elsa Moberg, who's Walt's mother, and Clara's, our grandmother, Carolyn, this is Carolyn, uh, Ibby, Ibsen, um, and she, Carolyn and I are cousins. Clara is our grandmother, and Clara is your aunt. Mm -hmm. We got that straight. Yeah, All right. Yeah, that's the easy part. Yeah, yeah, that's the easy part. So what I remember about Grandma Moberg is the way she always had her hair in braids that she curled on top of her head. Mm -hmm. And I think she, at the very end she was in the nursing home. Yeah. Did, yeah. And they cut all her hair off. Really? Oh, they did? I don't yeah. remember that part. I just, I just felt so sorry for her with that beautiful hair just having it whacked off. <laughs> I remember her in the nursing home talking, uh, her, her short-term memory had gone, but her long-term memory was there, and she talked a lot about the two horses that the, that they had, the two work horses they had when they were young, and they had names like Tom and Dave. I can't, or, I can't remember the names of them. My dad could tell me, but she would talk a lot about those work horses, and she obviously loved the horses very much. And, uh, yeah, I, re I remember coming here to Vashon and visiting her at the nursing home. And it was sad because um, she was probably, I, I don't even think she was five feet tall. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that she weighed um, like 110 pounds at the most during her life soaking wet. <laughs> so she was tiny. And none of us really inherited that smallness. Yeah. Uh, um, I was a actually able to pick her up and carry her. Yeah, you, you were able to pick her up and carry her. Yeah, I could see that. Cause she, but I, I think she was pretty tough because she always, I know my dad said that uh, uh, that they never really did that much as a family because his parents were always working. And I, and I remember he said about religion, he went to the Baptist church with neighbors because his parents didn't have time to go to church or anything, and the neighbors obviously invited him to go. So, but can I add something Yeah, to that? Pat has something to But add. in our father's written material, he did say of his parents that they knew the Bible and they knew current events better than anybody else he knew at the time. So they were well-schooled and well-read. Would you like to say anything about Clara and these two can chirp in what do you remember about grandma i just i loved her to bits and when i was a child i had horrible ear infections every winter and she'd pick me up and carry me into the living room so i'd be around other people and uh, i think that's the thing i liked the most about her was she didn't just shove me away in a bedroom and leave me aunt clara and garner had traveled the world a lot and they had a uh, Clara had her doll collection on the shelf in the living room in there and I would run there the first thing when I got there and just act out little fantasies and stuff with her dolls and she would let me play with them you know and, and I just thought that was so wonderful that
you know, she not only had that collection of wonderful dolls from all around the world, they were all mm -hmm. in different native costumes and they all had different personalities to me and um, that she would let us kids all, I'm sure you guys played with them too, oh, you yeah. know, and, and got to um, um, have, and then I also loved the big set of binoculars they had on their windowsill mm -hmm. there, remember mm -hmm. those? And, and you could watch the ships go by and they had an old stereoscope which was fun too oh, yeah, yeah, you remember yeah. that yeah and um i liked to look at the collection of pictures they had in that stereoscope and all the wonderful picnics we had here and um, it was always such a blast coming here and uh, we all remember rowing in the old rowboat and turning rocks over and finding the little green crabs and um, yeah. digging around on the beach and stuff. It was it was just so much fun. Just loved it so much. I remember playing with those dolls too. And I remember the smell of homemade bread because Garner had diabetes and Clara would always make the bread, homemade bread. Thank you everyone for your input.